Imagine being a fish. Confined in your own watery prison, the ocean makes up only 71% of this earth. Which is like, not much at all. I've been studying fish for many years now, and one thing I've noticed is that they can't walk. But what if they could? If a fish were to live on land, would it prosper or would it fail? Could a fish potentially become the world's most powerful species? Well, there was only one way to find out. To simulate this scenario in the 2008 video game, Spore. While swimming around in an ocean of disappointment, my first challenge on this journey was determining which fish to pick. I decided to go for the salmon for a few main reasons. They already have a habit of jumping into the air, so they've got some experience when it comes to not being in the water. On top of this, salmon are very tough creatures, and when they aren't being eaten by Gordon Ramsay, they can survive in extremely harsh conditions. So it was decided, and within a few moments, my chief salmon, Mr. Fish Fingers, had been created. With nothing more to do, the big moment awaited. And, with a little bit of encouragement, Mr. Fish Fingers took a deep breath, <gasps> held it in, and made his way onto land. Seeing as Mr. Fish Fingers had no legs, his only option was to bounce and flop about. But Mr. Fish Fingers was so happy to be out of the ocean that he somersaulted his way around with joy, and eventually came across some more creatures. It was a catfish, and wanting to maintain the brotherhood that all fish shared, Mr. Fish Fingers decided to make friends with them. Feeling good about this new friendship, he continued on his journey, jumping and skipping through the grass until <gasps> Some human beings went speeding past. This was bad news. Humans were famous for doing a lot of fishing, and if Mr. Fishfingers was correct, he was a fish. For now though, they had gone, and Mr. Fishfingers was able to flop on past, eventually reaching another nest of creatures. This time, it was a group of koi carp. These koi carp were incredibly wise, and they proceeded to give Mr. Fishfingers some introspective advice. But if there's one thing a salmon hates, it's introspection. If Mr. Fishfingers really thought about it, then salmon should really just stay in the water. And this was a reality that he was not yet prepared to face. He opted instead to eat the entire koi population, and with all that wisdom digesting in his stomach, Mr. Fishfingers felt a little bit smarter. With this newfound intelligence, he realised that instead of merely passing by the other fish around him, he could maybe recruit them to his cause. Then he realised that eating all of the koi carp might not have been his best move. There were of course still catfish though, and with a catfish on side, the party went back to the salmon's base and Mr. Fishfingers prepared to evolve. Now a far more intimidating creature than he was before, Mr. Fishfingers felt confident enough to go and explore further afield. It wasn't long, however, before he ran into trouble. The humans he had seen earlier had set up camp nearby, but Mr. Fishfingers was a new salmon now, and he reckoned he could take them. With one big run-up, he thrust himself straight towards the human's face, but he was then beaten to a pulp. Thankfully, Mr. Fishfingers' catfish friend rushed in to save him, and he was only just able to escape. That catfish's sacrifice would never be forgotten. Wounded and on the verge of collapse, Mr. Fishfingers might not have survived had he not stumbled across his next allies. A group of trout. The trouts took him in, cared for him, and by the time he made way, he was accompanied by their greatest warrior, Timothy. Timothy Trout. With Timothy by his side, Mr. Fishfingers felt unstoppable, and he was able to defeat some more species in the surrounding area to increase his fighting ability. By the time he returned home, oh look, the salmon were migrating, a sign of the fish's advancement, and following suit, he and Timothy ventured after them. Along the way were many dangerous creatures, a bunch of aggressive plums, and most notably, the humans once again. You killed Colin the Catfish! screamed Mr. Fishfingers as he launched into battle. The humans were startled and began to make a retreat. Mr. Fishfingers thought he had won, but it was all just military tactics, and after foolishly charging into their ranks, Mr. Fishfingers was beaten up so badly that the game crashed. It was back to square one. 
Mr. Fish Fingers had to defeat the plums all over again. And oh look, the salmon are migrating. This time, Mr. Fish Fingers made sure to keep out of the human's way. But he swore that one day, he would get his revenge, and maybe steal their legs too while he was at it. After travelling past some orangutans, and being chased by some rather unfriendly lobsters, they finally made it to the salmon's new base. Here, Mr. Fish Fingers took the opportunity to once again evolve, and then he died immediately to the next creature he saw, and the game crashed. <sighs> Oh look, the salmon are migrating. This time, Mr. Fish Fingers would get things right. Oh, uh, nope, he's died to the plums. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, look, the salmon are migrating. I swear to God, I was playing Spore on Minecraft Hardcore mode. It wasn't just Hardcore mode for Mr. Fish Fingers, however. And the next time he engaged the aggressive plums in combat, Timothy Trout tragically passed away. A great servant to the cause, and more than anything, a dear friend. On the upside though, he tasted delicious. With Timothy's memory in his heart, and his body in his stomach, Mr. Fish Fingers snuck back past the humans, swearing once again to steal their legs, then back past the lobsters, and finally, he arrived at the salmon's new base again. After evolving for a second time, Mr. Fish Fingers took the opportunity to get back at the lobsters who had chased him before. But once the fray had died down, he stumbled across a creature who melted all the anger in his heart away. His name was Mr. Pinchy, and he was an adorable crab. It turned out that Mr. Pinchy was attempting to establish something known as the Crustacean Nation, and although he may have purposely forgot to inform him of the murder of several dozen lobsters, Mr. Fish Fingers and Mr. Pinchy made an agreement to work together for the sake of underwater creatures everywhere. As such, they moved out and began to wreak havoc on the rest of the world. With Mr. Pinchy's help, there was nothing that could stand in their way. And, following a memorial service for Timothy Trout at the Trout's Nest, it was finally time to bring justice to the humans that had haunted fish kind for so long. Mr. Fish Fingers once again went flying in for the kill, almost too enthusiastically this time. But it was this enthusiasm that had the humans outmatched. And, before long, the Salmon Crab Alliance was victorious. This could only mean one thing. Salmons were about to get legs. Yum! With his new legs, Mr. Fish Fingers was unbelievably fast. Almost too fast, in fact. His legs took him further afield than he'd ever gone before. So far, in fact, that he uncovered something he never should have uncovered. Standing in front of him was a giant whelk. The thing about giant whelks is, they are extremely aggressive. Running into a giant whelk can mean only one outcome. And in the midst of all the action, Mr. Pinchy was caught and unceremoniously killed. Mr. Fish Fingers was so heartbroken that he decided to remove his legs for good. He then returned to the crab nest where he met Mr. Pinchy Jr. and told him of his predecessor's fate. Mr. Pinchy Jr. swore that the Crustacean Nation would stop at nothing to take the giant whelk down. Although, he then died a couple minutes later. So, maybe, I guess, Mr. Pinchy Jr. Jr. will carry on his grandfather's wishes? In fact, I wonder if there's a video about that. Having struggled through all of this commotion, Mr. Fish Fingers and the Salmons had come a very long way, and they finally felt it was time to move into tribal stage. A village was established, and the Salmon took to killing the local population of strawberries for food. Following their lead, Mr. Pinchy Jr. Jr. took the crabs to tribal stage as well, and it wasn't long before a trade route was set up between the two kingdoms. With peace and harmony beginning to spread, Mr. Fish Fingers' next move was to build relations with a nearby village of pears. But as he scanned the map, he noticed that one of the Crustacean Nation settlements, the Lavender Village, had been caught in a rather precarious situation. They were about to be attacked by one of the Salmon's greatest enemies, a giant grizzly bear. The bear stomped around, causing absolute chaos, and all the Salmons could do was skid about the place in fear. All Salmon within the vicinity of the Lavender Village turned tail and ran. But whilst they did so, two brave crab warriors went out to meet the bear head on. They approached it with caution, intending to offer a truce. But the bear ripped them to shreds before they even opened their mouths. Mr. Fish Fingers knew something needed to be done, and he ordered the manufacturing of all kinds of weapons. The Salmons 
were going to war. As the battle horn sounded, they skidded their way into formation and fortified the Lavender Village. As they formed ranks, Mr. Fishfingers himself went out to the bear and baited him in. With the bear following just behind, he wriggled as fast as his fins would carry him, and when it got close to the village, the crabs and salmons attacked as one. The battle raged on for seconds, if not minutes of time. The salmon on the front line were doing some serious damage, and the crabs were... well, the crabs weren't doing much. But in the end, it didn't matter. The bear couldn't cope, and it fell to the ground with an earth-splitting thump. The day was saved. Salmons and crabs rejoiced, and even the pears got in on the celebrations. It sure did feel good to live without the tyranny of the grizzly bet. Hold on, who is this? Hearing that one of their giant overlords had been defeated, the Red Bear Nation had taken up arms and moved into the area. They sent out fishermen, rounding up fish from all the surrounding oceans, and with no intent to take this lying down, Mr. Fishfingers grouped up the Salmon Armada and they confidently skidded over to the Red Nation and began their assault. The Red Nation was defeated in an instant, but by this point, it seemed an almost endless stream of bears had arrived. The Green Nation and the Purple Nation were now nearby, but an even more pressing matter had befallen the Blue Village, the appearance of yet another giant bear. Luckily, the Blue Nation had a means to defend themselves, and by the time Mr. Fishfingers arrived to help, the bear went down in a single strike. As he made his way back home though, Mr. Fishfingers noticed some purple bears heading in the opposite direction, and it turned out that while he was gone, almost all of their food had been stolen. One unfortunate salmon mercenary was sent out to steal it back. He was supposed to be the salmon's most sneaky recruit, but the mission went about as well as you would think. With fish kind now on the brink of extinction, they gathered all the strength they had and made one last charge. The final march of the salmon. Mr. Fishfingers and his men put up a valiant fight, but the bears were too many and the salmon never stood a chance. They were defeated and to this day, no salmon has ever set foot on land again. Because they're fish. I mean, what did they expect? They should have just stayed in the water. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop the outro. Hey guys, it's Jude here. I just thought I'd jump in here at the end of the video because today I received a package in the post. It's from the people over at Rhino Shield. And this isn't a sponsored segment. I'm not being paid to say this, but I think they figured out that I like anime. And because I've done some videos in the past on Attack on Titan, they sent me a load of Attack on Titan themed cases. I think because the new season's coming out, they're, they, they're doing a little bit of a collaboration with Attack on Titan. I already use a Rhino Shield uh, phone case on my phone. They're the best phone cases in the game. Genuinely though, they're really good. It's like my phone's never gonna break. Eren Jaeger could probably punch my phone and it wouldn't even shatter. So I thought I'd just do a little short unboxing just so you can see what you too could get. Let's see what designs they have here. Wow! It's a scout regiment case. You too could be in the scout regiment if you so desire. No way! Look at guys, it's a PewDiePie themed case. Now I can be like PewDiePie. Oh, I hope this gets me loads of subscribers as well. This is like the messiest. Whoa! No way guys, it's my favorite character from Attack on Titan is Levi. That's so crazy. I love this guy. He's so good at fighting. Oh, no way, guys. There's an arcane themed case as well. Oh, no way. The LA Lakers NBA basketball team case, guys. If I watched basketball, I might. they might be my favorite team if I watched basketball. There you go. It's the Colossal Titan. So you too could be a Colossal Titan. Yeah, anyway, I, I wouldn't be endorsing this if I didn't believe it was they were actually genuinely good. They are probably the best case you could get, so I'll leave a link in the description. You can tell I don't really know how to do shout outs yet. <laughs> Sorry for taking up your time, pardon the intrusion. Um, I'll let you listen to the beautiful outro now.